Welcome back to Collectability. Today it is my absolute pleasure to present to you a selection of Detective desk timepieces. Uh, these happen to all be uh, solar desk timepieces, and we're going to delve into the world of the history of these clocks, what makes these uh, solar timepieces actually tick, and show you some of the uh, wide breadth of aesthetic creativity that uh, make these so collectible today. And uh, hopefully I could present to you some pieces you haven't seen before. And uh, next time you're in Geneva at the Patek Philippe Museum uh, or uh, at an auction, you could watch these more closely because they are unfortunately a bit neglected today because people aren't uh, knowledgeable about what these are all about. But hopefully collectability can change that and we can dive deep into the world of Patek Philippe desk time pieces over the next few minutes. So where did it all begin? Patek Philippe started in the 1940s researching in nuclear timepieces, electronic timekeeping, and most importantly, solar timekeeping. Uh, this was a separate division within um, uh, Patek Philippe in Geneva, and uh, they came up with some very novel uh, designs and, and concepts. And, uh, and you're looking at a number of them in front of me today. Um, the first designs in early 1950s, the solar clocks were typically housed in silver cases, very simple, very minimalist, and it was all about the timekeeping. But during the late 1950s, we start seeing some more creative designs uh, flow from the workshops. Here we have a piece from a reference 701 from 1956. And uh, eventually we'll do a video on just don't clock because it's a whole separate segment uh, deserves more attention. But this is an example of one of the earliest uh, Patek Philippe dome clocks with a very familiar design. Now, people call them R2-D2 because of the shape, but uh, frankly, this was uh, made many, many years before the 1970s. So the, the concept is simple. The reason it was shaped like this is because the top part of the dome apt, uh, rotates, so you can put it towards the sunlight, towards a window. Um, so if you have this on your desk and want it to, to continuously be powered, you're able to just twist the, the top in order to face the solar cells towards the source of light. These can all be powered by uh, natural sunlight or um, incandescent lights. Um, all of it uh, works with these solar panels. So we'll dig into more how they work with uh, the next clock. But, uh, it's a, Nice way to kick it off with this reference 701. So during the 1950s and 60s, we start seeing some very creative designs. And one of the familiar elements is the, uh, the solar panel, where you can see these two demi-moon, these half crescent uh, clocks. They have these incredibly hand engraved um, cartouches or surrounds around the solar panel. But when you open up the clock, you'll see how these actually work. So that little blue ring battery is actually the accumulator. The power is taken in through the solar panel, it's brought to the accumulator. And the battery is essentially a backup system too, a redundancy system in case the clock doesn't have enough sunlight. And you'll see a pocket watch movement. And this is the big secret with all of these early desk timepieces. They actually use a pocket watch movement to uh, move the, the hour hand and the minute hand to tell you the time. Um, this is a marriage of cutting edge 1950s technology meshed with 19th century pocket watch uh, movements. And these are indeed early Patek Philippe movements that were used in these clocks. I guess it's a form of horological recycling. So. You can see the designs are very creative with these um, two uh, demi lune designs. And uh, throughout the 1950s and 60s, we continuously see more creative designs flow from the workshops, where perhaps the most exciting design that came out was something that you rarely see. This is a Patek Philippe solar wall type piece in the form. Of a cartel clock. So cartel clocks were a very popular form of 18th century 
um, wall decor, functional wall decor. And Patek Philippe decided to bring back this aesthetic uh, for the cutting edge solar desk clocks. This one, I'm waiting for the archive, it'll be 1961, 1962. I first saw, saw this um, style of wall clock at the Patek Philippe, um, 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 the Patek Philippe Chateau in Geneva, right next to the, uh, the, the main factory. Um, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Stern, Philippe and, and, and Gertie Stern put one on the wall where it is to this day. And you could um, admire it from afar and still keeping time. And once I saw that, it was about 20 years ago, I just said, I need to find one of these. And recently I was able to find this with its original box. And I'm absolutely thrilled to have this in the collection today. Um, here we have two other, um, well, this is the 1960s and this is the early 1970s uh, desk time pieces. And, uh, and you can see very clearly uh, the mechanism, the pocket watch movement that's on a horizontal plane that is uh, powering the, uh, the hours and the minutes and the uh, solar panel on top of the clock. Important to note that these are technically not clocks. These are all timepieces. Reason being, in strict um, horological language, a clock must have some sort of striking system on a bell. And these are not striking in any way, so they are technically timepieces. But everyone uses the words um, interchangeably today, but uh, should be noted. Now I'd like to show you the Mona Lisa of desk timepieces. And this is it. This is from 1971. This is a rhodium or white metal plated um, clock or timepiece. And you can see the solar panel on the top. And what makes this so special is the, the decoration. This has something called the my frog, forgive my French, and it's frozen enamel. It's an oxidized copper that has enamel overlay and this absolutely stunning look. It's um, looks like it's from the set of Game of Thrones or something. It's just such a beautiful textured, um, dark uh, aesthetic, which plays with the light. And Patek Philippe decided to put these bold orange and black hands on the dial, which continues that early 1970s aesthetic. This is one of my favorites that I've ever seen. It's the only one I've known to exist with this um, particular layout. And it's a pleasure to sh share that with you. It wouldn't be a collectible collectability video without showing an ellipse. So here is the reference 1505 from 1984. This is an ellipse, ellipse desk timepiece also with a solar panel on the top. And uh, you'll see a fundamental shift in these clocks and I'll show you the movements. So as all the ones we've looked at so far had the pocket watch movement, this is something a bit different. It's called the caliber 33. And this is a solid state circuit um, uh, movement. So there's no pocket watch movement uh, within this desk clock. This is um, all solid state circuitry, which is cutting edge, uh, late seventies, early eighties horology. Um, the result is this very simple classic look. And uh, I'm thrilled to have the original gray Patek Philippe display box uh, to go along with it. In an earlier video, we discussed the history of the Navicors and how to change the batteries. Um, so we have two examples of uh, a Navicortz uh, here. This is a Navicortz 2. And uh, it's fun to note, it says, actually, it's original certificate of origin, which I haven't seen before on one of these. Um, and it was produced in 1981. You can see the movement number um, for this uh, desk timepiece, so technically a chronometer. And the original key. Another secret with these Navicorts ones and twos that most people don't know is when you're lucky enough to have the original key to open the box to remove the uh, uh, the clock. It's very interesting to note. And I was curious to test. These keys are not interchangeable. They're individually keyed per box. So if you try this with another Navicorts, it won't work. So another little detail that only Patek Philippe could pull off 
uh, with these uh, little beauties. And here, Navicorts 3, the last clock I'll show you today. Um, and, and these Navicorts represent a very affordable segment, well under $10,000 uh, to own the exactly dust clock. Uh, as prices continue to uh, to march upward for the more unique examples, um, we can see that more people are discovering the world of collecting uh, Patek Philippe desk timepieces. And uh, it's been a lot of fun today to share these with you. And, uh, and thank you for your time. All the best.